we have our own bank, uh, we have an aviary, we have our own zip code, and, and it's like we have our own country here. Three miles off the coast of Miami lies a 216-acre man-made island that has long been home to the rich and powerful. Fisher Island is only accessible by boat, and Oprah Winfrey, Mel Brooks, and tennis star Boris Becker have all owned homes here. But paradise isn't always perfect. Following the sudden death of an Eastern European billionaire, Fisher Island has been embroiled in a protracted legal battle that has stalled all new developments on the island and is intruding on the seclusion and privacy that its residents covet. We don't have any average people that come here. We are a private community, a private club. And when a resident purchases their apartment on Fisher Island, they then go through the membership process approval. There is a $250,000 initiation fee for the club, plus about $20,000 in annual dues on top of the condo and community association fees that can add up to more than $80,000 a year. For that, the island's 132 permanent residents enjoy an unusual set of amenities, including a 24-hour marine patrol and a 50-man security team. We've been uh, residents, our family, for approximately 10 years. I was traveling one night and I received a phone call that our cat snuck out of the house. And within minutes we had 10 security guards, golf carts, searching the whole island for the cat and security found our cat. And I told my daughter that to remember this story when you're older because it's very unusual that you have security guards on golf carts looking for your cat none of the less and then finding them. Safety is a perk of uh, living on the island. Since there are no bridges, you have to go through a security process. You, you take your car on a boat, on the ferry. You have to be cleared by a resident to get to the island. There are many factors to this that uh, are very unusual. The island became known as a playground for the wealthy after Carl Fisher, a notable Miami Beach developer, bought it in 1919. A few years later, Fisher traded seven acres of his land with William K. Vanderbilt II in exchange for a 250-foot yacht. Vanderbilt built a Mediterranean-style estate, then he acquired the rest of the island. Despite the current development battles, Fisher Island's insularity is still a draw for some of the world's ultra-wealthy. The demographics of the island is really interesting because so many international uh, residents here right now. They're from South America, Brazil, Mexico, um, Russia. They're so focused on having the kind of security that we have on the island here. There's a certain degree of secrecy and eccentricity, I think, on the island. And people on the island, and I've been there many times, don't want to share with you who's there or who has been there or who might be there. Um, it's a very private place. That's something the island's residents won't change, not as long as a ferry separates them from the mainland. On litigation, I prefer not to comment, but one of the keys is uh, to keep Fisher Island as exclusive, as private, and as secure as we can. <laughs>